Hey everybody, it's been a while. It's Harris from MedTech 67 again. And today we've got a salty transit. We had snow. We had a crap ton of snow. We got down to negative 15 in Oklahoma. And I honestly think it's because of all the times that I've said I don't have to deal with the rusty parts on a transit because I'm in Oklahoma. So uh, yeah, shame on me I guess for that one. Uh, today we've got a 2017 Ford Transit. This one has the 3.5 in it. Uh, but today we're going to be doing ball joints without the Ford tool. Um, I know I got a lot of feedback on my other ball joint video showing how to do it with the Ford tool. I understand that the price of that thing is completely inhibitive of the, the average DIYer doing their ball joints. They'd rather just take it to a you know a shop because if you're doing ball joints less than one time in the life of your vehicle, it's cheaper to just take it to the shop and buy the tool. Well, there is a lower cost alternative, but going to require you to replace a few more components and we're going to get to that now you're going to see i got the induction thing going on back here this truck's getting a lot of work done to it and that'll be in another video so ignore that today we're just dealing with the struts possibly the front brakes i don't know i haven't seen it yet uh maybe the wheel bearings all that good stuff but mainly struts and ball joints she's got about 80,000 miles on her definitely needs front struts we're probably gonna be doing rear shocks too and small joints. So let's get to it. All right, so you can get from Ford your front knuckle, and it comes with a new ball joint in it. Now, that is about the only other way to do ball joints on your transit if you don't have the tool. And this may look intimidating, but I promise it's not. It's really simple. And if you're doing struts, then this is a great time to do this as well. Um, now you're gonna see this whole assembly, it's brand new, it's all put together. You cannot, as far as, to my knowledge, as of today, which is like February 22nd, 3rd, somewhere in there, 2021, no one makes a factory complete strut assembly yet. Like for instance, just from here up, because you have your strut mount, your strut bearing, uh, your bump stop, spring, strut, insulator, all that, I don't think anybody, makes that yet you have to buy all these ports individually from uh, Ford I think Monroe makes a factory strut and there might be some others out there but no one makes a complete strut assembly to my knowledge as of yet if you guys you know see or hear of one please feel free to post that in the comment below and I'll edit the video for you uh, now you might be wondering do I need to replace this whole thing absolutely not if you're doing ball joints without the tool all you need is the knuckle and the nut the nut has to be replaced when it comes out uh, now, don't get me wrong, you might mangle your tie rod in, um, so you might need a new tie rod in. You will need a new tie rod nut, but all you need to do your ball joints with, uh, without the tool is the knuckle that comes with the ball joint and the nut. So we're going to get started on this. Now, the reason why I have this whole assembly ready to go is all I have to do is hot swap it. Now, you're going to wonder, how am I going to do my struts uh, without a strut compression tool? Now you can go to your auto parts store and get you a tool that will grab on each side and compress the coils. I don't use those. Those are a very high stakes jack in the box game, which I don't like to play. Uh, I have a strut compressor. So the best solution for you guys uh, out there in the DIY world is going to be simply take off your old strut, take it to a shop and have them swap it out for you and then bring it home. Now, if you wanna go the route of not having your van down, the only other alternative is buy all of these parts together, have the shop put them together for you, and then hot swap them out. Uh, that's probably not going to be what you do, so you're going to have to have your van down for a little bit, and you're going to need another ride to the, you know, any kind of shop that has a strut compressor to change this out for you. I shouldn't charge you very much; probably about thirty bucks a strut uh, to um, take the old one out and put the new one in. But I highly recommend if you're replacing the struts to replace the strut bearing and the strut mount. This is where a lot of noise and vibration sounds come from. They undergo a lot of wear. When you turn the wheel, uh, every time that you turn left and right, this bearing, all of the vehicle's front weight pivots on it. So these things wear out, and they're not really weather tight. They get a lot of dirt in them and everything, so replace them. All right, let's get started on this. Warning, you're going to be on the interweb. Why? Oh. Oh, I found an ATM this morning. Uh, an ATM? No joke. On the way to work. Um, 
drop the kids off the bus stop, turn right there on York. ATM has been cracked open and dumped on the side of the road. Are you kidding? No, I got here about 30 minutes late because I waited for uh, police. Cleveland County Sheriff's Office to get there and come corral their ATM. Wow. Well, that's a thing. Yeah. That's not something you see every day. No. Was it one of the bigger ones or a little? little I was, I mean, I don't know. Not that big. It's obviously easy enough to get in the back of a truck with a couple of crackheads. Yeah. All right, so let me get you guys a better vantage point. That's a true story, though, about the ATM. Also, these caliper bracket bolts have to be replaced. I'll put them on the screen here with the part numbers for them. Anytime they come out, they have to be replaced. And always have your caliper bracket hook ready before you take off your caliper. brake pads look really good on this it looks like I just did work to this looks like I just replaced the wheel bearings too so we're gonna hang this guy up and out of the way which is gonna be in your way so I'm gonna cut to the next part all right next we're gonna take off this tie rod nut it's also a 21 so far everything we've done is a 21 all right and the next thing we're going to do is there is a uh, bolt here and a bolt here this one has an allen head in it which i believe is a four or five millimeter i'll tell you for sure here in a second it's got an 18 that's your sway bar end link we'll set that to the side then we're going to uh, unhook our abs sensor and we're going to pop out this 18 millimeter nut right over here and get those out of the way I was wrong, it is a six millimeter. So you just hold the stud with your Allen wrench. Take your 18 off. This nut does not have to be thrown away. I believe so. I'll check myself in the service manual, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't need to be. Just put that guy back up on there. So while I've got you here, you guys let me know in the comments section, would you rather me like, speed up, jump to jump, step to step, make the, uh, the video shorter, or would you rather just sit here and watch what it takes to be done real time? Uh, I don't care either way, that's just a matter of me speeding up the clip in the video, but uh, let me know, let me know what you'd rather have me do. Alright, so we're going to hit that with just a bit of lube, and um, it's kind of cold in here. I mean, the hotter this is, the better. They usually come out pretty easy, but it's got this little 10 millimeter stud on the top of it. It kind of helps act as a sacrificial end, so you can afford to hit it with a hammer a few times before it mushrooms out and you have to file it down, so you don't have to worry about hurting the threads. So we're gonna see if we can get this guy to let go with just a few whacks of the old BFH. Now, if you guys are doing a brake job while you're doing this, uh, which I really don't need to on this one. In fact, this one just got new calipers and everything. Um, I just go ahead and take off the wheel bearing and all that stuff out of the way now. I'm just going to do that on the bench later. Uh, but if you are doing the brake job and all that, just take all this out now and it'll be a little bit lighter to get out of there, especially if you don't have much help. So, there we go. She's loose. Just a little bit of lube. Good life lesson. A little bit of lube will take you far. So that nut on the bottom of the ball joint is a... 30 millimeter. Let's see if I can get you guys a better view of that. Let's see if I can win my cinematography award. I think that's a pretty decent view for you guys. Alright. Got that guy loose.
And now I'm going to get the other side. I'm going to get the other side looking just like this uh, because I'm going to need to bring it down. I'm going to put a floor jack right up underneath the stud on that ball joint and smack that A-frame to get it to pop loose, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, but if I do have to pickle fork it, it's not a big deal because we're replacing the ball joints anyway. So anyway, so I'm gonna cut to the other side real quick. We're gonna get all that done and then we'll meet back here. See if I can get you a decent vantage point. We're just gonna compress it just a bit. Just give me some, give me some up motion. Get that tie rod out of the way. All right, and we're gonna hit right here. I'm gonna do my best to not hit the tripod. Now, like I always say, never hurts to do a quick prayer, possibly a seance, crack out the Ouija board, and hope that she cooperates. Power of Christ compels you. Sometimes she just, just doesn't cooperate. I guess I should have said the prayer a few more times. Well, we might be forked. Well, before I beat on that A-frame too much, let's uh, let's give her some heat. <laughs> There we go. She's loose. Just a little bit of heat. So we're going to press right here. Yeah, I guess first we can let the jack down. My best not kick my camera. But we're going to press right here. Pull that to the side, and now she's loose. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. All right, folks, the goose is loose. We're almost there on the hard part. That's pretty much the hardest part we have to do. Once we get past this, we're in the home stretch. We have to take off the three nuts that hold the top of the strut, and they live right inside here. I'll show you that here in a second. But real quick, I wanted to show you, and I'm gonna talk about the whole ball joint coming off thing. It's really easy for us down here in the south. Uh, if you're in the north, you might have to use a pickle fork tool. Show a picture of it somewhere right here. Um, you might have to actually get in there with a pickle fork, heat it, hit plenty of penetrant on it. Uh, if you have an air hammer, it sometimes helps to get right there on the, the A-frame around the ball joint, uh, stud, and shock it, you know, beat the piss out of it um, to get it to let go. But if you're reusing your A-frames, try to be as gentle on them as possible because you don't want to be causing cracks or stress cracks or anything like that. One of my favorite all-time auto YouTube channels. Uh, he's honestly my inspiration of starting my own YouTube channel. Uh, South Main Auto uh, with Eric O. He's an outstanding mechanic. Uh, you'll see him do <laughs> some outrageous stuff because he lives up there you know, north of the Rust Belt where everything's rusted and seized in and a pain in the ass. Uh, you'll see him using oxyacetylene torches and stuff like that. So you guys uh, who live in his neck of the woods, you might have to do that and please don't hate me for it being much more simple for me. You guys who wrench in the north are 10 times better of a mechanic than I am down here and the rest of us are down here in the south. Mad props for you guys who wrench in the north. You you have to use your skills a whole lot more than we do. All right, so let's get the top of that strut loose. It's nice when, you know, they leave presents for you so you can work on your, work on your truck. All right, so the service manual will tell you to remove a whole lot of these components uh, to get back here. And I can tell you, you don't have to. We're going to bring the glove box down. You have a tab there. You just have to press forward these two tabs and it comes down. Uh, that'll allow you to get your hand in here easily. Now, there is a bracket right here. That is the flimsiest bracket I've ever seen. Let me see. Right here a little better. Um, it's not going to hurt it to just push it up just a little bit and get it out of the way. And then you're going to pull the carpet back, just kind of fold it under itself. This is a rubber floor mat, so it might be a little bit easier than what you got. And as you can see, we can see our three nuts here. 
Now, that's a whole lot better than having to take all this crap out. That bracket's not going to break, I promise. But you're going to get in here with a short, preferably ratcheting, stubby wrench. It's a 13 mil. And see if you can see them okay back there. And get those three nuts loose. Now, if you're doing this by yourself and you don't have help, I'll bring the floor jack back into the old equation. And you're just going to rest it underneath it. You don't really want to compress it. It's just going to hold it up there in the hole for you while you take just like that. No real weight on it at all. While you take those three nuts off, that way it doesn't just drop out when you do your last nut. All right, we got our three nuts out of there and just be warned, the passenger side is the hardest side, the other side is the breeze. So now that we have that out of there, all I'll do is grab onto it and pull that jack down. There we go. There's our old strut assembly. Go ahead and get that done to the other side and move on to the next step. All right, so here's our old strut assembly. We're gonna get the parts off of here that we need. We're going to line up our bolts there on our wheel bearing hub. <laughs> Assembly off. All, right. All those bolts have to be discarded. All of these guys are trash. Uh, next, the only thing I need off of here right now is this ABS sensor. An eight mil. Let's see, we see that okay. Our ABS sensor, eight mil right here. Pluck that little guy out of there. We'll clean it up. But as for that, for my assembly, this is all I need. For you guys that aren't doing a whole strut like I am. Uh, you're gonna take your new strut cartridge uh, and uh, take this guy off this pinch bolt right here back here I believe it's a uh, 18 take that guy off slide this strut out it's gonna be a little rusty it might help if you uh, get a chisel or something spread that knuckle out a little bit get some lube knock that thing out of there but you're gonna take your whole strut assembly down to a shop uh, that has a strut compressor and have them swap it out and any of the parts that you're replacing like I said I highly suggest you replace your mount here and the bearing uh, and the insulator that goes down here Let's see if I'm in frame the insulator that rides in between the spring and the strut um, but you're gonna take all your parts down to the shop and have them swap it out for you all right well we have this off you're gonna want to clean up this part of the wheel bearing because this right here is your actual tone ring that your ABS sensor reads. So when the wheel spins, it, I guess it's behind that. It's somewhere in there. Behind that is your tone ring. But you'll see when you take this thing off, there'll be a bunch of dust stuck to it. But we're going to clean off this mounting flange, make sure it's nice and clean. Now, like I said, this rotor is, this wheel bearing is pretty new. So there's not a whole lot there, but you want a clean mounting surface to your new knuckle. And then clean off your ABS sensor real well, too. We're going to go ahead and put in our ABS sensor easy to get to you right now. Torque on this little guy. Man, can you guys see okay? Torque on this little guy is 97 inch pounds. I don't know why I showed you that. There we go. 
All right, and now we'll get our five wheel bearing bolts. Go ahead and drop this guy in here. Because it's honestly easier to do it here than on the vehicle. New bolts. Never reuse these. Or the rotor bolts. Uh, luckily, we don't have to use these because we're not here to mess with the rotor bolts because these brakes are still good. Uh, I'll make sure that the uh, part number for them is in the description. Should you need them, don't count on your dealer actually having them. Work on these is 46 foot pounds. these guys in a star pattern and then just double check them all all right I was I wasn't tightening them with this guy I was just running them down so it didn't take all day all right so our ABS sensor is reinstalled our rotor is on our new strut assembly um, none of this is actually torqued down besides the strut nut um, so I'll double check it when it all gets in there But now It can go into the vehicle so Let's do that Take this ball joint nut off All right, let's get this bad boy in there Now again if you're by yourself on this the easiest way to do this is gonna be with floor jack. Make sure you have some light up in there. You're going to want to use the floor jack to roll it in there. Shoot it in here. I don't know how well this is going to commit to camera. But hopefully you can see what I'm trying to accomplish here. I'm using the jack to lift it up. And you can spin that bearing, line it up with the holes there. But the jack will hold it there for me. A lot easier than it sounds to get this on camera and Uh oh, and then your jack tries to roll away, honey. Jack gum it. it was going so well. Dag burn camera in the way. There we go. And 
so we've got our nuts snug in here. Now the torque on these is 22 foot pounds, but you're not gonna be able to get a torque wrench in here uh, if you do it this way. If you do it the uh, the old service manual way by removing almost the entire dashboard, uh, then yeah, you can totally get a torque wrench in there, but there's 22 foot pounds of torque, uh, which is basically snug. Uh, so with a regular size wrench, I just snug them down real good. It's one of the very few things I actually don't do a, a torque on. But you're gonna wanna put your carpet, or floor mat in my case, back over it. Once you got your carpet back up over your strut tower, don't forget to just pull this little bracket back down. Make sure it's not gonna chafe on anything. Make sure you didn't hurt any wires or anything. But you can see it's back and happy where it wants to be. At that point, we just, I'm gonna have to clean this up, but you just push these guys in and then your uh, glove box goes back. All of the uh, the customer's accoutrement go back. And this little cover goes back. And if you're doing this for someone else, even though I didn't make this whole mess, if you're doing this for someone else, especially if you're making money on it, get in here, a good wipe. I love tub of towels for this. Wipe down everywhere where you've touched because nothing screams unprofessional like handprints being all over the customer's car from where you've been working on it. And like I said, tub of towels are amazing for this. They're cheap and they're awesome. Anyways, get off my soapbox about that. Alright, so our struts are all done up on the top side. And this is going to be hard for me to show you on camera. You're just going to see my big fat butt on the screen. But we're just going to push down on this A-frame and let that, uh, that ball joint stud drop in. And bam, she's in. Um, I actually make a tool. It's a big, long pry bar to do that with, basically. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I'm not gonna show you that because you probably don't have one. But the real reason is, well, I don't have one. Uh, let's move on to the next steps. All right. So we have already torqued our wheel bearing bolts. We never touched our rotor bolts. We do need a new tie rod nut. Before we do that, we're going to clean that guy off. This guy, its torque is 76 foot-pounds, your sway bar in length. Well, I'm officially irritated. They did not send me my tie rod nuts, which I should have seen, but I didn't. So I'm gonna use the old ones right now because it's gotta go to the alignment shop anyway. And I'll have them put some on for me. Seeing that they're the one that sold me the parts. I'm gonna go down to the Ford dealer. Make sure this guy is clean, the bore is clean. And your tie rod ends clean. I've already checked these guys are still nice and tight. Which cracks me up, the ball joints don't last as long as the tie rod ends. All right, so let's go over our torques. This one's 22 foot pounds. This one is 59 foot pounds. This torque back here on this pinch nut I still have to do is 76 foot pounds and then 180 degrees so let's get moving on those i'll start with that pinch bolt so i don't friggin forget it so we are at 76 foot pounds and then we're going to go 180 degrees 180 is really easy to do. We're just going to make a mark right in front of that head right there. 
and we're gonna bring you guys can see okay we're gonna bring this point back here around to it and that'll be a hundred there's our mark got a little bit more to go more bam 180 degrees I was right this uh, sway bar bolt is uh, 76 foot pounds Get wrench on first you dingus Snug to where it won't spin on you. And my torque wrench is already set. 76 foot pounds. There we go. And then the other one that holds on that sensor, not that it's super important, is 22 foot pounds. How much you want to bet the Ford dealership will not have that tie rod nut for me? God, this has been so aggravating getting the right parts lately it's like ever since covid hit i can't get the right parts to save my life i'll order them and you know usually when i'm ordering parts i'm ordering three four jobs at a time and something will fall through the cracks you know because i can't tell you how many times i'm at the dealership and I go nope this isn't what i ordered that's not what i ordered you didn't send this part you gave me too many of these so I have to go back and forth to the, you know, the parts stores three or four times. Only two foot pounds. It's just a never-ending saga. This guy gets taken to 59 foot, foot pounds because I'm technically reusing. The reason why Ford wants his nut reused. Sweet baby Jesus. The reason why they want to reuse it is a nylon lock nut. Can you guys see that? It's a nylon lock nut, and once you reuse them, once they're pretty much done for. I've already cleaned off that stud, clean out these threads, and just for liability's sake, I'm going to put a dab of the blue Loctite. Now, this nut's still going to get replaced, but. I practice what I preach and try to be as safe as possible. So I'll put some of that on there. And that's going to start spinning on you. So you can get your little 10 mil on there. I'm not saying you should do that if you can't get a nut. You need to replace the nut. Do it the right way. Don't take the liability away from the manufacturer ever. If something goes wrong, let it be the manufacturer's fault and not yours. No need to self-incriminate. That is not a 21. But that's just so I can be a little bit safer on the short four mile drive to the dealership where they can do the alignment. Now, do you have to do an alignment after replacing this knuckle? No, but if you're doing ball joints, why aren't you doing an alignment? Makes sense. Be a little bit better for you. So there's a Torx head there. I'm not gonna lie, I'd normally just bump it with the impact. I'm trying not to teach bad habits. The Torx is a T50. That's a 30 
30 mil wrench. Good lord. Putting this upside down is weird. Like I said, normally I just bump this with an impact. It does spin the ball joint. I'm not really supposed to. If I'm gonna teach, I need to lead by example and do it the right way. There we go. Once it grabs like that, then you can just torque her on down. Work on that bad boy is 159 foot pounds. Click. Because you've been manhandling it, or woman handling it, I mean it's 2021, I don't want to assume your gender. Clean off this rotor real good. Get all those greasy handprints off of it. We're going to put on two new caliper bracket bolts. I put a dab of Loctite on there on my own volition. Just because I like the extra security. Makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Let's see if I can get these bad boys to line up. Look at that first try. Hard to stay out of y'all's way. So we're on these bad boys in. We never touched those guys, so we don't have to mess with them. If you need the specs for all those, you can find those in my front transit brake job video. The torque on the brake caliper bracket bolts is 206 foot pounds. All 206. Oh no, I'm missing my cap. Let me get another one. I wonder if I knocked it off when I was taking it off. It's alright, I got plenty more. Two hundred and six. Trying to stay out of y'all's way. Two hundred and six pounds. Foot pounds, not feet pounds. For feet pounds, it'd be four hundred and twelve. All right, folks. That is ball joints and struts replaced without the Ford special tool. I hope that was informative. I hope you guys like that. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think on if I should shorten the videos or keep them as long as they are. And we'll see you guys on the next one.